This is Jude from HeadFi. We're at CES 2012. We're with Cardis, and uh, this is George Cardis, and we're going to talk about his new in-ear headphones. Um, I'm not even sure the model name, so you'll have to tell us what they are. Uh, but I have been listening uh, listening to them. George, can you tell us why you did them uh, before we get into the actual in-ear headphones? Well, I did it because it, some years back uh, I was commissioned by Logitech to make cables, and. Uh, in the process, I got to listening to a lot of different earbuds, trying out the cables and whatnot, and I didn't like them. <laughs> no, I mean, they really, they were annoying. I didn't like them in my ear. I didn't like the sound. They weren't musical. I, all of them. You know, I mean, I, I couldn't find anything that, that I wanted that I would like to get on and listen to for any period of time. Um, so I finished the cable project, or at least to a certain stage, and I decided that, gee, I need to make something myself, and then I'll just start from the ground up and decide what needs to happen. And so what I set out to do was create a mirror of the human hearing system, and I look very closely at, at how our ears work and how the system works in one thing or another, and these in-ear speakers are a, are a sealed system. So the first thing that became apparent was that we had to match the driver cross-section to the eardrum cross-section. So we went through different driver sizes up and down until we got a system that was linear uh, with volume. In other words, you turn the volume up and down and whatever you did, you didn't have to go to a certain place to get the bass right or the treble right or, or whatever. And we began the basic process of sorting out drivers and stuff. Uh, now, George, what did you mean by mirroring of the ear? Because I'm not clear on that. All right. The, what we did is we started with the driver itself and we made the compliance of the driver and the cross-sectional area of the driver similar to what a human ear is um, and we had to size the driver relatively precisely to hit a window where the linearity of the device the bass versus treble didn't change with volume when you turned it up and down which is a very common problem so and it, it stayed time linear through the whole spectrum as much as possible and the next step after having developed the first driver was to make the acoustic transducer into the ear uh, something that couldn't be heard. Now commonly that, that you would just have a hole drilled, uh, a square surface in front of the driver in a hole drilled or a tapered surface, uh, which would have a very characteristic sound. Um, even a radius, like a radius, uh, a, a constant radius, like a part of a circle, what it has is a constantly repeating tangent. In other words, it's repeating the same radius over and over again, or the same tangent to the radius. The only way around that is to use a logarithmic curve, uh, like the shape of a nautilus shell or the cochlea in your ear. And the reason that they're shaped that way is because the tangents progress golden ratio, like a chord. All right, and there's, so there's no near unison re resonance between the tangent sections. Uh, it was surprising what happened when you did this. They became musical and they began to image. They began to form a musical sphere. Um, so the next step we had to do was fit them to the ear and so we created these guys which are quite different in that they're not the normal hemisphere or a piece of foam or whatnot. These guys actually are very very thin material and they as you can see, they're they're quite different, but they 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 go in your ear. But then, if they try to come out, they expand. You see, okay. so that so they fall into the ear rather than out of the ear, and also the weight is more in the ear than out of the ear. Um, the other thing it does is when you put it in the ear, it all spaces out, so it rests right here. So now you've got something that you can go run and jump and play and and do whatever you want with, and it fits comfortably in the ear, and it's not going to go anywhere. It's, it's there, and you don't even know it's there. Uh, so I addressed all the comforts sonically, musically, and physically that I could. It took three years to sort the dang thing out. But uh, in the end, I got something that was a reflection of our own hearing system. Okay, very cool. I think I followed some of that, but uh, some of that's above my head. But um, uh, Let's talk about the models here. There are two different models uh, right now, correct? All right. And this is a their 5813 Fibonacci sequence. Uh, model one, model two, and uh, this one is more basically designed around an iPhone. 
I mean, it's it's dynamic, it's live, it's fun, it's sensitive, it it responds to uh, anything you plug it into. It's got universal compatibility, one thing or another. This is a little more subtle approach, and it'll work fine in an iPhone, but you kind of run out of gas unless you got you know unless your ears are more sensitive than ours. Um, it's got plenty of gain, but not you know no overabundance. It's smoother, slicker. It's articulate. It uh, doesn't have big boom and tangle or anything like that. It's just a very natural, smooth balance. A little more sophisticated driver, but maybe not so much fun. So uh, it's two different uh, applications. So the model names again are? 5813 Model 1, okay. 5813 Model 2. Gotcha. Yeah, the Model 1, uh, directly out of my iPhone, was easier to drive. It was really nice to use directly out of the iPhone. This one, like you said, wasn't as efficient and and uh, sounded much better out of my uh, dedicated portable rig here. Right. Uh, so uh, this one was a more de like a more detailed sound, Maybe more resolving. Has the look, you know? <laughs> has the, has the look too. <laughs> well, George Cardis, thank you so much uh, uh, for talking about uh, these new in-ear headphones ears. Uh, I remember the first time you told me about them. I mean, that was several years ago. Yeah. Well, I, I the first or how I. I got into this when I started making the headphone cables for the Sennheisers and this and that and the other thing. Uh, the, one of the things that really set me on the path was the first can jam I, I went there and, and God, it was exciting. You know, I mean, it was young people, vibrant, alive, people into the music. It was a, a free for all and there was different stuff in different directions and God, nobody knew what impedance anything should be or anything else. It was just a good time, you know, and uh, I, I really enjoy this whole group. Well, we're glad to see you uh, coming into our fold. So, uh, well, you've been there for a long time with the headphone cables. Yeah. But, uh, all right, well, George Cardis, thank you very much uh, for explaining these uh, new products to us.